Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bitcoin 2013. We are so excited for all of you to be here. Thank you for coming. We would love it if everyone can please filter into the seats now. We're going to get started on the program. So in the next minute or so, if you could please get over here, get your drink, and um, sit down. We would, we would love to entertain you for the evening. So we have over a thousand people pre-registered. We have, a, have had a ton of other people walk up and we are just so overwhelmed by the response that we've had from this event. We just launched the Bitcoin Foundation in September of 2012 and Peter Vicenis will talk more about um, our initiatives. But we are just so thankful and excited about all of you being here. I'd like to please introduce uh, Dan Nynan, the MC and comedian for the evening. He's performed at a TED conference and recently performed for President Obama. Please welcome professional comedian Dan Nynan. Thanks, Dan. All right, Bitcoin, are you feeling all right? Whoa, that's my fault. I'm sorry. Are you feeling all right, Bitcoin? Let's hear it. Let's. Are you ready for a great show? I said, are you ready for a great show? All right, so folks, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my dad is from India, and my mom is from Japan, believe it or not. Yes, so I, uh, I get my sushi from 7-Eleven. In fact, uh, my mom is so Japanese that when I was born, I actually came out cordless, believe it or not. Now, this might shock you, but before I was a comedian, I was actually a computer guy. I used to work at uh, Intel in, Calif in uh, Santa Clara down here. And when I applied for the job at Intel, they said, you're Indian and Japanese, you don't even have to interview. You can be vice president. No, I, I wasn't vice president, but it was actually my job to travel the world with the chairman Andy Grove and do uh, technical demonstrations on stage. I was terrified of speaking, so I took a comedy class and uh, left a perfectly good six-figure-a-year job for a job that averages $12,000 a year with no health insurance. Needless to say, my parents are quite proud of me. <laughs> yes. So now, folks, as I mentioned, my, my dad is from India, my mom is from Japan. True story, I'm driving to the airport with my parents and we see these cows grazing in a field, right? So my dad says, now there is a word that can have a lot of different meanings. Graze, for example, for example, a cow can graze. And then I say, or you can be grazed by a bullet, especially if you're hanging out with Vice President Cheney. And then my mom says, my mom says, or it's a kind of a donut. Anybody not get that? All right, come see me afterwards. Anyway, so, uh, all right, I, if anybody wants to come sit down, uh, I'll seem a lot funnier if everyone's listening, but I guess that's not going to happen. So, uh, trust me, I am funnier than I seem right now. <laughs> I've done this many times. Um, but anyway, folks, uh, I am uh, very, very blessed uh, to travel the world in my job. Uh, performed in 20 countries, uh, going to Australia in, in about six weeks. And, um, you know, like I performed in, for example, I performed in Hong Kong, had some time off after the show, went to Beijing, and uh, just to mess with people, I go up to them and go, hey, where's Chinatown? I'm like, no Chinatown here. This is all a Chinatown. You want a Chinatown, you go back to your country. I have cousin in Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, and everyone has a cousin in Brooklyn. So anyway, um, since this uh, stand-up comedy is obviously not working very well here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you uh, some of my pictures, my favorite pictures from around the world uh, that I've taken. Now, this is not your typical boring slideshow, and uh, once again, it would seem much funnier if everyone back there would come sit down, but I, I can't compete with free beer, apparently. So uh, anyway, here it goes. Now, let's start with uh, right in my neighborhood. I, I got to do this for 15 minutes, folks, and then, you know, I've already been paid in Bitcoin for this, so... By the way, I am half Japanese, half Indian, but I'm not Satoshi, just so you know. I'm, I'm not Satoshi. I did an event with, uh, last week with the, for the Vice President, uh, Biden, 
And last year I did a, uh, an event for President Obama and uh, it was amazing because they said the security was going to be a little less for Biden. For Obama, we had 35 Secret Service people with him. For uh, Biden, they had three TSA agents. Uh, all right. All right, great. All right, more and more people are coming in. More people are listening. This is great. All right. So anyway, funny pictures, folks. Right in my neighborhood in New York, first we have uh, don't litter on the side of a trash truck. Now, if nobody littered, then these guys would not have jobs, right? I thought that was uh, moderately funny, but apparently you didn't. Uh, now, this is the funniest. I actually saw a guy playing golf on the subway in New York. Yeah, a guy playing golf. Uh, apparently, he must have thought that he was on the uh, 96th hole, right? Yes. Now, the Philadelphia, the SEPTA train, they actually have signs that read, do not board moving train. I guess they have a problem with people jumping on moving trains in Philadelphia. Now notice on the Long Island Railroad, they have the opposite problem because it says do not get off moving train. Right? Now I'm not like a party animal. Or any, when I go to the hotel, I like to sleep. Uh, I always ask for the uh, quietest room they have. Now here's the Crown Plaza, Los Angeles. They put me on the quiet zone floor and notice it reads, we, uh, no children, leisure groups, marching bands, or circus animals will be assigned to this area, right? And I'm thinking, I want to be on that floor, right? Uh, I do a lot of weddings around the world. Uh, the, I did a, a, we a wedding in uh, Florida, and notice the signs everywhere said, Pena, Werner, weeding. Weeding, yes. Which is very appropriate because uh, Werner was a bit of a pothead, yes. Uh, did a wedding in Honolulu. They flew the MC all the way from India. She went through New York and I asked her, you know, I live in New York City, I said, how do you like New York City? She goes, I don't know, it's just too crowded and dirty. And I'm like, she lived in Mumbai. <laughs> so we flew over to the uh, Big Island and uh, checked out the volcano. And to uh, hear from the uh, Department of Obvious Signs, uh, road closed. Surrounded by lava, yes, in Hawaii. Uh, who, who here has been to Hawaii? This is West Coast. Who's been to Hawaii? By show of a, a hand. Yeah, Hawaii. Hawaii is amazing. You know, it, it's, I mean, it's part of America, but everything in Hawaii is a little different. For example, did you know there are no billboards allowed in Hawaii? No billboards. Uh, I think because they need to save all of the wood for surfboards. Also, no uh, trailer parks or mobile homes in Hawaii which explains why they have no tornadoes. Even the language is different. Uh, H, K, L, M, N, P, W, and the five vowels. I'd like to see them do the Wheel of Fortune in Hawaiian. Pat, I'll guess the K, please. There are 24 Ks. I'd like to buy the vowel, the A. There are 39 As. I'd like to solve the puzzle. Is it kakala kala ka kala ka kala ka Poi. All right, yes. You can stop taping that, the Kasim. Yeah, this isn't even worth taping. <laughs> I'm bombing. This is called bombing, folks. But uh, anyway, so that was Hawaii. Now, in China, apparently bottled water comes in a can. Very strange. And, and notice behind there it says U.S. beer. Yes, very generic. Um, this is Johannesburg, South Africa. It says, we understand traveling can be stressful, but please don't take it out on our... What, what had to happen for them to print up that sign, right? Continuing to bomb. Um, this is uh, the beach in Durban, South Africa. Uh, it says persons using this pier do so entirely at their own risk. And notice it's from the Parks, Leisure, and Cemeteries Department, which explains why there's only six people on this beach in this 100 degree weather. I had some time off, went to Mozambique. Uh, for a free Dan 9 and CD and DVD valued at $30, can anybody here tell me the official language of Mozambique? Who said that over here? All right, yes, Portuguese it is. Come and see me afterwards. Yes, give them a round of applause for knowing the geography. Yes. Now, for another, another CD and DVD, can anybody name the President of Mexico and the Prime Minister of Canada, our two neighbors? Okay, that's half of it. Does anybody know both of them? Does anybody know both of them? 
No, the full name, though. Enrique Pena, yeah. Okay, no. Somebody, all right, all right. Whoever it is who, ha if you really have it, come see me afterwards for your free CD and DVD, which is worth $30 to some people, but nobody here. Um, now, in Maputo, in Maputo, Mozambique, they named the streets after Asian dictators, right? I said, how do you get to the corner of Kim Il-sung and Mao Zedong? They said, oh, it's at the cor uh, turn left at the corner of Hitler and Mussolini boulevards, right? See, that, I'm not funny because this young lady here has been texting the whole time I've been performing. She's, she's not paying any attention to me. I know I'm bombing, folks. This is what bombing looks like. Now, try this yourself, folks. Try typing this into Google Maps. I said, how do you get from Orlando, Florida to Melbourne, Australia? It says here, turn left at Northeast North Lake Way, kayak across the Pacific Ocean, 2,756 miles. Yes. This is real. Try this yourself. Yes. Um, apparently in NIMH, they're looking for healthy volunteers who smoke cigarettes. And uh, Bethesda, Maryland, yes, where I grew up. Uh, it's a ghetto outside of D.C., uh, Chevy Chase, Maryland, that's where I'm from. Uh, this is Doctor. Uh, this is from Delta Airlines, my favorite airline, uh, the best doctors in New York. This is Dr. Robert M. Bernstein, and believe it or not, his specialty is hair transplantation. Yes. The North Georgia Falcons priority list, number one, God, number two, family, number three, acedemics. Number four, athletics. I, I think number zero should have been um, spelling, maybe? Yes. Now, I was at the George Bush Library last week in Texas. This is the emergency guide for the White House West Wing, and it says emergency dial 911. Very strange, yes. And uh, those of you, uh, no, this is a package that actually came to my apartment in New York. It came in a DHL envelope with a FedEx label and it arrived by UPS next day air. I mean, I know Obama talks about working together, but that's ridiculous, folks. Yes. Now, for those of you who are Democrats, you will appreciate. Uh, where are my Democrats? Democrats make some noise. Republicans make some noise. Oh, libertarians make some noise. All right. Oh, whoa. Wow, well, I, I had no idea. Cool. Wow. Who was a, I, I won't tell you what to do, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not telling you to make noise, I was suggesting. <laughs> was, wasn't Gus Hall the libertarian presidential candidate? Was it Gus Hall uh, like 20, 30 years ago? No, no. Ron Paul, okay. oh, okay. Now, now, I'm dating myself a little bit here, folks. I, I have something to admit to you, which is hard to admit, but I just turned 52 on the 4th of May. Yeah, nobody believes me. They said, 52? I thought you were 32. And I tell them, well, I was. You know, just a long time ago. Yes. And people are like, well, how do you look so young? Well, I travel 250,000 miles a year. And, uh, and, and uh, Einstein said that, you know, the faster you travel, time slows down, right? Okay, there's nobody here who understood that. All right, never mind. I, I thought you of all people would. And then... Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, and people are like, wait a minute, 52, you must have gotten plastic surgery or something. I'm like, do you think I would actually pay a doctor to end up looking like this? <laughs> All right, that's moderately. And the, the George Bush Center for Intelligence, folks, yes. That's uh, usually when there's Democrats, they laugh at this. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, in New York City, somebody, there was a taco stand that was closed due to short staff and some wise guy pasted a sign on top of it that says, hire taller staff because I need a taco. Yeah. All right, thank you, yes, that's my slideshow. Thank you very much, folks, yes. Now, this is the point. The, the next slide here has my Twitter, but I don't want anyone to post after this. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to check out more of my comedy, I'm at comediandan.com and uh, you can see me actually uh, performing for the president and um, Steve Wozniak, and uh, but actually being, you know, people are laughing uh, in, in that clip. Uh, so yeah, comediandan.com, and uh, yeah, this is a little tough with these people, you know, talking. And you know, comedy is like a movie; you have to be 
totally silent, and that's not happening here. Uh, but anyway, without any further ado, folks, I would like to now welcome you to the interesting part of the Bitcoin 2013 conference. Give yourselves a round of applause for coming here and selling out this conference. That's fantastic. All right, and now without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, by the way, I want to find out where people have come from. Who has, uh, who has come from the East Coast here? Any East Coasters? Any uh, fellow New Yorkers here tonight? All right, anybody from overseas? All right, who is, uh, who is represented? Anybody uh, shout out a country, anyone? UK, all right, fantastic, welcome. Which, which country though? England? Okay, well who else is here from overseas? Australia, all right, I'm gonna be in Melbourne and uh, Adelaide and Sydney, uh, June, July, you know, when like the best weather, right? Yeah, in the winter time. Anybody else, who else is from overseas? Greece, all right, Efkaristo, thank you for coming. The, the only thing I know other is logarithm uh, sas palakalor. Give me the check, yeah, anybody else, anyone? Argentina, oh, all right, Buenos Aires, I've been there, I love it. You guys have Wi-Fi in the subway. Right, it's awesome, awesome, awesome. Who else, who else is here? Yes, I'm sorry? Barranquilla? Medellin, all right, all right, Colombia, round of applause for Colombia, fantastic. Anybody from, uh, anybody, yes? Netherlands? Who's here from Netherlands? Anybody from Holland? No? In Netherlands? Who got it? Guten Abend. I had a friend in a small city, Aschendelft, flock by Amsterdam. Yeah, heel good. Hartstikke bedankt. All right, anyone else? Pardon? I'm New Zealand. Brazil. All right, obrigado. Welcome. All right. Brazil is awesome, folks. Brazil, the richest country now. They're going to have the World Cup and the Olympics next year, right? Yes, one, wonderful. You guys are like buying everything in New York City. I can't afford my rent anymore. It's awesome. All right. All right. Wonderful. Welcome. All right. Any, anyway, folks, enough of this. Without any further ado, I would like to introduce the chairman and executive director. Now, folks, I need you folks in the back. It's okay to be up and around when I'm talking, but right now we have the chairman and executive director of Bitcoin and the CEO of CoinLab. So if you could all come forward. There's plenty of seating. Please don't be afraid. I don't pick on anyone. Uh, please come take a seat. Uh, we have the CEO and uh, uh, chairman, uh, CEO of CoinLab, chairman of uh, uh, the Bitcoin Foundation, executive director. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, please welcome Mr. Peter Vesnes. Thanks, everybody. Do I need this? No, I don't need this. I'm going to make a Probably a terrible error, put this down. Oh. Sorry, Al. Are we back? OK. How awesome is this, you guys? This is great. This is super cool. Um, what's crazy is one person organized this. Is Lindsay Holland here anywhere? Lindsay, thank you. Be nice to Lindsay. <clears throat> Uh, Lindsay is, I'm actually going to tell a story about Lindsay. I recruited Lindsay in one day. Uh, I said, your old job is too boring. I want you to come. We're going to have a small conference, like two, three hundred people. She said, okay, I can do that. Uh, I said, I need you to quit, like, immediately. She said, okay, I can do that. I was like, great, you're in. Uh, I have bad news, I have to pay you in Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> and she was like, okay. <laughs> so. Lindsay's done pretty well so far, so that's great. Um, so, so, yeah, let's cheer. That is good. Uh, so, who knows what that number is, out of curiosity? Guesses? Yes, thank you. Yes. Yes. 18 million what? That's total transactions on the Bitcoin network since it launched. That's really cool. The no it's going like this. Um, We'll hit 20 million in June. And that's a lot of transactions. That's a lot of financial interacting. I think that's cool. Right now, $45 million a day is being traded on the Bitcoin network. Uh, yeah, that is awesome. That comes to 16 billion a year. Uh, 
And when you have that kind of growth in a totally open payment network, uh, something happens. Uh, the underlying asset goes up. So a year ago today, Bitcoin was at $5.08. And I've, when I wrote this slide, it was at 24x. Might be over, might be under right now. It's volatile, we'll never know. Um, so in Silicon Valley, that's like a pretty good return, not an awesome return. Um, <laughs> Um, last night I hung out with some Facebookers and they're like, 24x, come on. <laughs> like, that's in one year, give us time, give us time. So um, I'm really excited about that. And I think, of course, a lot of the reason you guys are here, A, you now have money too, because Bitcoins are 24 times more valuable. And B, uh, your friends are jealous and you told them to come along, right? So um, I'm glad you're here. What, one of the things I think when I look at that is how many people have worked to make that happen, right? So I'm looking at people who have given away tens of thousands of Bitcoins to seed economic systems, to explain to people how it works. People like Roger Veer travel tirelessly around the world, preaching, literally preaching Bitcoin every day. Um, there are core infrastructure providers. There's you know, companies like Google who put money into building the infrastructure. People are working nights and weekends. So I feel really appreciative. I mean, I just, I want to give you guys a hand and say, nice work, good job. So yeah. <clears throat> Um, I'm looking forward to another year of explosive growth for Bitcoin. I think that'll be great. A lot of people want to know what's coming. They're like, look into your crystal ball for me, please. What do you see? Uh, someone is going to get rich this year in Bitcoin. So uh, we will see some of these businesses do really, really well. We'll see individual investors do really, really well. I'm excited to see what happens there. I think that'll be great. There will be new entrants. Uh, there will be young whippersnapper companies in this space that are going to take your candy away from you, incumbents. So watch out. Like, I'm expecting to see a lot more competition this year. We're starting to see, you know, a year or two ago there was a little bit more, maybe a little bit more politeness in the space. P uh, good innovators, hungry innovators are coming. They're backed with good money. I think that's good for the whole community. Um, but everyone's going to have to kind of up their game and watch that they uh, don't lose their candy. Bankers will be here. Bankers, are there bankers here tonight? I cheer you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, uh, now, what kind of bankers? It's going to vary. It's going to take some time to bring all sorts into the fold. But I know for a fact, you know, many large banks have research arms. They're very interested in what's happening. They want to understand it. Totally open payment network with uh, deflationary properties requires some new thinking, as, as you guys know. And so they're going to be here. They're going to be in our space. We will have more regulatory in the coming year. So the kind of the first guidance is out from FinCEN. And we're going to see a lot more talk about this in the US and other countries over this year. There will be technologists. Uh, so get, when I think back, not even a year ago, we launched the foundation. And we were like, we should have a conference. That would be great. Uh, people need a conference. Um, when I think about everything that's happened in our space since then, just all the growth I'm talking about, it is amazing to me that the foundation still just has two paid employees, Gavin and Lindsay, that's all. Um, it's time to grow, right? So I wanted to announce tonight a few things. One is we'll be hiring some technologists, uh, at least one senior and one junior. So search us out if you like the sound of a job like that. Uh, we will be hiring someone to work on the Hill uh, and in, uh, interact with Washington, with regulators, help shape. Yeah, that's good. I think that's really good. And I'm not, um, I am someone who, would, who thinks that we've got to have a civil conversation. Uh, some parties think lawsuits work well. Uh, well. We'll see kind of how the, um, how the conversation goes, but the foundation is clear that it's time to engage with regulators and have a good productive conversation and make sure their regulation makes sense for their concerns, plus ours, things that we need and, and want to see in the space. Yeah. So. We're going to hire an executive director. Uh, I am very busy. And so this is, my, this is my swan song as executive director, not as chairman. Oh, there's clapping. Yes. Yes. Thank you, those who hate me. I appreciate it. No. Maybe it's, <laughs> um, I have, uh, uh, we actually have uh, identified a good candidate. I can't tell you who yet. I think most of you will like who we're talking to. We're just working out some details. So in the next week or two, I hope that we'll, we'll have good news for you there. Um, now, we are also launching international um, chapters. So we've had eight countries contact, pe 
people in eight countries contact us so far and say that they want to have a chapter of the Bitcoin Foundation to do the same stuff in their country. Uh, internationalization, working with local regulators, bringing local community groups along. So we'll, we will have a kind of like chapter conference this fall. And if you represent, if you are from a country and think, I would like to help with that, let us know. And we'd like that. But we've got eight identified so far. So what can you do to help? Uh, and just a, never has helping been such a perfectly greedy and capitalist thing to do. You can help, and it will help everyone. Uh, one thing you can do is join the Bitcoin Foundation. That's simple. The, it's about, if you're a startup, it's 10 Bitcoins, I think, to join as a, uh, on the industry side. And it's like 0.2 Bitcoins on the individual side to join. That helps. That money just gets funneled into the kind of stuff I'm talking about, salaries, um, conferences, other things. Uh, I want to announce that we've got two board seats opening up as of today. The Bitcoin Foundation currently has a board of five, I believe, and we all felt like we'd like, we need more help on the board and we want a, a chance to run our elections and do more kind of just broader community engagement. So I will take a second to explain how that works. The, uh, the, there are three classes of seats on the board. Um, there, in particular, for this conversation, there's an industry class and an individual class. Now, individual members vote individual board seats. Industry members vote industry board seats. We've opened up uh, one industry board seat and one individual board seat as of today. I don't know when elections will happen, but when they do, they will only be voted on by members, so that's a good reason to join, uh, if you care who's on the board and want some, some say in that. I also am looking forward to the vigorous campaigning on Bitcoin Talk that we will see. Um, so those of you who think you'd like to join the board, like sharpen your knives, get your campaign stuff out. Um, and I believe we have, a, we have a Bitcoin Foundation members meeting tomorrow, so we'll talk more about it there. But that'd be great. We would, I'm really looking forward to the talent that's thrown at us there. That'll be very helpful. The other thing you can do is invest. I know we've got tons of investors in the house. I've talked to many of you. I've not even met many of you. Um, so you guys are here, you're checking out the space, you're seeing if you like the vibe, if you like the companies, the plays. I think it's great, you should do it. Um, one thing I wanna say too though, many of you longtime Bitcoiners who just you know, have 700 Bitcoins floating around in your Bitcoin QT wallet from 19 something, um, you guys are rich now. And uh, one thing you could do is think of yourself as angel investors. So I would I just put that cap on and say like, I could put in, you know, ten or twenty-five thousand dollars seed funding. Uh, what is that? Like six bitcoins? No, it's more than that. Um, so, uh, think about putting that money to use in the space. And you know, Silicon Valley is famous for this kind of reinvestment dynamic. And I'd like to see Bitcoin do that too. I think that'd be really good for everyone. Um, that is it. Thanks, you guys. Whoa.